Welcome to Retro Scale Modeling. My next build is this Rebel Dashboard Collector's Edition and, and it's the 40th anniversary one. So in the box we, we have um, the map, well we, we have the paints and uh, a poster. Um, I haven't got the actual sprues here at the moment. Uh, they're actually drying. Uh, I cleaned them before um, uh, deciding to do the video so I do apologise. About that, but you'll see the sprues as I go along um, with the model. I'd also, I do have the instructions here, and the instructions are nicely laid out. I've gone through them quite a lot. So, we have the color codes here and the sprues. So, there's one, two, three, and the, the main hull. As always with the Rebel instructions, they're nicely laid out and easy to understand. There's a little bit of what, uh, what to do here, particularly around uh, the command tower. There's uh, a few little bits and pieces that are, you, you're going to have to pay special attention to. And as well as on the actual deck. And at the back of the instructions, we have the um, decal placement and color guide, paint guide. So once the um, sprues are dried, I'll, I'll get on with the build. This um, I'll probably be two parts uh, the, this build, but I'll, I'll see how I go on. So to begin with, um, I'm going to be painting this stand, and I'm using Revel Aquacolor 302 Silk Black. So this is the first main sprue. Uh, as you can see, that's primed, as I said, at the intro there. Um, I forgot to show them before they were primed. So it's a, just a, a simple uh, paint in the stand. And then moving over to the screws or the prop. And um, this is painted in 92 brass. 92 brass is quite a difficult colour to paint. Um, you may have to put on one or two uh, coats for this. So I'm beginning the construction now. And um, the first thing I do is I. Uh, I'm placing two bulkheads inside the um, uh, fuselage, one half. The, there is um, uh, location marks for you to, to place them in. Uh, it's quite a deep, deep loose so yeah, you, you shouldn't have any difficulty. Just make sure that they are pointing the right way, but of course if you do put them upside down, they're not going to fit anyway. Once that's done, you, you, there's a, a little uh, bar piece that has to go on as you can see here it's um it just forms the tail end of the sub um it it's quite important to get this um lined up properly you may find it difficult to do so um just bide your time with it there will be an opportunity uh, later on uh, to realign it if you haven't quite fitted it properly though um but it is quite important that you you try and fit it properly here at the moment at this particular time. I'm using Rebel Up Color 57 Grey to paint the deck area. And now I'm turning my attention to the stand. It's uh, quite a simple uh, construction. There's um, a lot of recess points at the end of the main beam to fit onto the cross section. And once one side was done, the other side just fitted in. It's uh, wise to do one side first, don't do two ends and marry up the um, or the other end together. Um, it just works out easier for some reason. It's time to join the two uh, hull parts together. If you line up the uh, two bulkheads and the location pins, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. You may have to be quite firm um, when pushing it together. Um, as you can see there, I'm, I'm having to push it quite firmly. Some clamps will help as well, um, but they're generally needed just so that you don't have to hold it for any extended period of time. And of course, this is where you'll find whether you've fitted the tail part um, properly or not. It should uh, be completely uh, closed off um, on the tail end with um, the, the, the part shown. So th the bottom is actually open, um, but there's like a concave of, of plastic. And then just where my where the clamp is going now, just below it. If you haven't lined it up, now's the time to do it. Um, if you flip it over and use a pair 
a pair of tweezers or something to get into the other side uh, to, re to align it because you won't be able to do it after this. I'm going back to Rev Lab Color 57 Grey to paint the top half of the hull. Um, as you can see, that's, I'm painting in small circular motions. This is a technique that I developed myself to eliminate any paint stops. It's quite a difficult technique to master. Um, if you have a look at how I paint yellows in my tutorial, you, you'll um, get, get a better understanding of uh, what I'm doing. But I barely put in any paint on the brush and just uh, lightly putting the brush all over the uh, area that I want painted. So, and it's almost like dry painting really. I should point out as well that um, even though the instructions called for this colour, um, I'm starting to think it should have went to a lighter grey. So if you're building this, you may want to consider a lighter grey than the 57 grey by Revel. Um, they do do lighter tones of grey of course, or you can use a, a different brand. While painting, you're going to have to make sure you take this uh, light grain down to about halfway on the hull before you change your colour as well. This is because you will be putting uh, a different colour on the uh, bottom of the hull. So to do that, uh, I have to mask off. Now, when, when you're uh, prepping to mask, make sure that the paint is 100% dry and it helps if you put a varnish on as well and um, this will stop any paint from uplifting that, that is quite important you don't want your paint to, to be ruined so I'm using Tamiya 6mm masking tape here uh, to mask it off if you look at the, the box picture or uh, pictures online you'll see roughly where the um, uh, line has to go but um, the rule of thumb is um, just line your masking tape up with the um, thicker section of the hull there and then you, you can't really go wrong. You can also give an, another coat of varnish over the tape and that will stop uh, paint please. So um, while that's drying I'm going on to the towel section and I'm using Revel Aquacolor 78 Tank Grey. Now it's only the inner section of this part that I'm painting on the border it is getting painted with the Revel 57 grey which is obviously the other main colour for the build. There is an argument to be made that um, this should be painted maybe in a, a metallic grey colour uh, or um, a steel sort of colour uh, but a darker steel maybe uh, just because it's um, a, a gangway, a walkway but do what you feel is best really. I'm now going over back to the deck, now the paint's dry, and I'm using Tamiya's X32 Titanium Silver. And what I'm doing here is I'm uh, painting all the little markings on the deck plates. So the, the grills, and the grid, sorry, the um, raised areas and, and that. Again, there's an argument that can be made that should be painted the whole thing in, in a more metallic um, colour. But it, I quite like the contrast between the the flat grey and the metallic look of the titanium silver. So I'm putting the side of the hull and this is um, Revel Aquacolor 78 tank grey. I'm just putting a bit of metal paint on the brush. And if you use the masking tape don't paint into it, paint downwards um, off the masking tape. So start your brush on the tape and bring it down. Tiniest amount of paint on the brush, take any excess off and then just very lightly touch your plastic and I paint in circular motion like this so there's hardly any pigment coming on onto the model. Now you're just applying it as one of the thinnest coats that you can do, but it ensures an even coat. And you just keep applying it. If you want different tones and definitions, you just apply more pressure to the brush like that, and that will give you a different tone, a color. Because basically, you're, you're putting a, a bit of not, not a large amount of pigment onto the, the surface area. But if you want a lighter tone, 
just ease off the pressure of the brush so you're barely touching the, the surface and you're just picked in that way and you can see that what I'm doing you can see how little is going on each time I do it but the circular motion will eliminate any brush stroke but make sure you've got an old brush doing this because it does tend to ruin your brush and you definitely won't be able to keep a point on your brush this is an old flat brush I'm using now this def um, doesn't necessarily save you any paint in fact it probably uses more paint because you're taking off the excess on a piece of kitchen towel but it's a very good technique if you don't airbrush it gives you a nice even thin thin layer of paint So now things are dry, I'm just pulling back the masking tape. Uh, do this in a gentle motion, that way you won't lift up any paint. Sometimes it can happen even if you've vanished and so forth. So it's always wise to be careful. So I think this is a good place to uh, stop, uh, finish part one. If you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the other builds on my channel? If you've subscribed to the channel, you'll be notified of uh, my future builds and updates. Hit that like button and of course you can leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.